Hello, all of my Israelite brothers and sisters, those of you that have been adopted and grafted into uh, the fold, those of you that are natural Israel scattered abroad the four corners of the earth. Um, don't forget to subscribe to that button right there. Listen, I want to talk about something because people have asked, you know, when I'm teaching, you know, about the Hebrew names and, and, and what do I know about the Hebrew names? Uh, I know a lot about the Hebrew names. I know, you know, they call it the sacred name Yahweh, um, uh, Yahashua, Yahweh. I know, I know about all of that. I personally choose what I am teaching from the King James Version Bible, I use the language written in the King James Version Bible. That's not to be critical of anybody that uses any Hebrew information about the name of the Most High that they come across. And I do realize that when I'm using God and Lord and the Most High, these are references of titles and I recognize that. I know that when I'm using Jesus, as I read it in the Bible, King James Version Bible, when I'm teaching, I know that there are other names uh, such as Yahshua. Some people have different other variations. Um, I don't get into it because when I'm teaching from a book, I don't like to halfway translate from the book. For instance, I'm not going to read... Uh, um, a letter from Paul and say Saul. Um, I'm not going to say instead of using Jacob. I'm not going to say Yaku. Okay. I'm going to use the English language, and there's a reason why I do that, and it's because this gospel must be taken or preached into all nations, all nations. Okay. So this King James Version Bible. Um, has been and can be translated or the Hebrew Bible like it was translated into English under the, through the King James Version it can also the Hebrew Bible or the Arabic Bible or Hebrew Arabic or whatever you want to call it um, it can be translated into any language and we do realize that as well so what am I saying when I teach people in America, I use English, okay? That's what I do. I use English with English-speaking people. And uh, again, I appreciate and I value and I embrace those that come across the various names in the different dialects of the Most High. Um, I get a little disappointed when I see one group using Yahweh and somebody using Yahweh and the two fight each other and say, you're serving a different God because you're not using the name that I'm using. I, I don't see that. That's, that's the adversary. That's the trick of the devil to put us against each other. So I will not, I refuse to follow and fall into that trap, okay? So that's me. Now, I have no problem when people say Yahshua. I know who you're talking about. When you say Yahweh, I know who you're talking about. When you say Yah Yahweh or Yahshua, I, Yahashua, I know as long as you are talking about the book and the Bible, the King James Version Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I, it does not even enter into my mind to correct you or be critical of a name that you may be not pronouncing uh, it in proper, uh, a proper way, okay? So, I don't fall into that. I, I just don't fall into that. I want to share this with you. On the day of Pentecost, when Israelites had came from the various nations to Jerusalem, as they had been commanded to three times a year, during the Feast of Weeks or during Pentecost, 
they heard Galileans, and I believe everybody spoke Hebrew, but what was unique is they heard Galileans speaking in a language wherein they were born. And when you read Acts, the second chapter, they were from all over the place coming to Jerusalem. And what was astonishing to those Israelites who came from the various countries wherein they were born because they had been uh, dispersed, um, they thought it was unique to hear Galileans speaking in the language wherein they were born. Now, what does that mean? What is the prophetic word for that? Or what is God showing us? That you are to take the gospel into the nations and teach the nations. That's what you were supposed to do. Now, I know some people say, well, you know, they were up there speaking in an unknown tongue. Well, that's not Bible, okay? They were, they heard Galileans um, when the spirit came, those angels, when they were speaking in tongues, being used by the most high, they heard the disciples speaking in a tongue through the Holy Spirit in a language where all of those Israelites have been born. So, um, that's important because what the Most High intended was for them to take the gospel to those nations. Now remember, in Matthew the 10th chapter, Jesus originally told the disciples, don't go to those nations, only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But later, to fulfill Jeremiah the 11th chapter, to fill other to fulfill other prophetic um, uh, prophecy that the gospel would be taken to the Gentiles. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, Gentiles who were Israelites referred to Gentiles. I'm talking about Gentiles of other nations who were not of the tribes of Israel. This gospel was to be taken to them. This is why Peter had the vision when he was dealing with Cornelius, who was an Italian, a Roman soldier, okay? And I know some people teach that he was an Israelite and not a Gentile. I can knock that theory and theology out of the ballpark uh, in another lesson. Cornelius was not an Israelite who was a Gentile. He was a Gentile of another nation, okay? So when God had to show Peter that it's your job to go to these nations, and that's what he did, okay? So bottom line, I don't get into the nation, I mean into the name war. I speak English, and there's a reason why I speak English, because I'm reading out of the King James Version Bible, but I do appreciate a lot of people that can break down Hebrew. Now, one of the people that I see breaking down Hebrew a lot, I encourage you to check her out. Her and her husband, um, uh, I think his name is Mariah, and, and she has Hula from the, her royal roots. She breaks down Hebrew words from being a verb and how important it is, and I think it's wonderful. So I think that if you understand Hebrew, so that you can explain what you're reading. I encourage you to follow that channel. I don't I don't know them personally, uh, but I'm just saying that I, I would endorse, um, um, I've listened to uh, his, his teaching and her teaching, and I, I think it's great. I think it's a great what they're doing. So, uh, but, uh, uh, Hula, I believe that's her name, from her royal roots, really, has a gift of breaking down the Hebrew language so that when you are studying, you can get the full essence of a word because she breaks it down from English all the way back to the Hebrew word, not Yiddish, not Yiddish, Hebrew, okay?